when we started out, we <coughs> were using what we call tank drive, which is it's four wheel drive, but the two wheels on one side are linked and the two wheels on the other side are linked. And um, it is fantastic at getting over things in your home. It, it drives over things like they're not even there. And that's fantastic, except that um, because these are linked and these are linked and the way that you turn in place is they kind of these go one direction, these go the other direction, and all four wheels have to slip against the ground in order to turn in place. What happens is when you do that, the robot kind of on many surfaces does this hop, 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 hop motion. And that is just completely unacceptable from a user point of view. So alas, we had to abandon the wonderful tank drive. So we moved on then to having differential drive. This guy's actually another tank drive. So we, we did stuff around the tank drive for a while so you can see like different wheels. But this is the first prototype where we were testing out the bump shell and the cliff sensor. So this guy has bump switches that allow it to sense in three different places, well, six places really, but three directions where it's been touched. And then he has cliff sensors on the bottom to tell whether he's about to fall off the stairs. And um, <coughs> this guy here is our first uh, custom laser rangefinder prototype. So we, Curry <coughs> has a custom laser rangefinder to allow him to navigate and localize and do SLAM, SLAM being Samsung use localization and mapping. And um, this is not the type of laser rangefinder we are actually using, but it was the first uh, custom laser rangefinder <laughs> type that we built. And this is what's called a laser striper. And there's a laser here that fans out a laser in 120 degrees in, in the horizontal plane. And then this camera over here sees where it hits things in the world. And you can tell the depth of that laser based on how basically high or low the pixels that you uh, the laser pixels you see in the camera are. And it worked. It worked pretty well. Um, but it didn't have quite the properties we wanted, so we have switched away from that concept. Um, and this is actually like primarily a you know laser and also software prototype. This is built on a huge and robot kabuki base, not our product. Um, but a great prototype. Pl great platform for prototyping robots. Um, this is the first integrated robot that was able to both um, have the animation to Cruiser Freedom and also to drive around and navigate. So uh, you can see this is showing off uh, as the eyelid degree of freedom and pan and tilt. And at the time, we also had this lift degree of freedom where the robot could, and I can't actually actuate it. It's uh, not back drivable. But um, this is, <coughs> you can see the linear bearing here. And there's a motor that causes the whole thing to lift at the torso to go up and down. Um, made him able to uh, basically smile and lift a little to brighten when he sees you. So he's like, happy to see you, or like, sad. And uh, it looked really, really cute, but uh, you know, added a whole lot of added complexity and cost. And so we had to abandon that degree freedom, unfortunately. But um, yeah, this, yeah, you can see a lot of the internals of, of the mechanisms that we use. And um, this is a more recent prototype with 3D printed shells. and. Uh, this is close to final. It's just you know not covered in proper shells, and the laser rangefinder isn't the right laser rangefinder. This is a, a stand-in. Um, but yeah, this is. It's got the speakers, and it's got all the microphone holes here, and it's got all sorts of other bells and whistles. Chest light here. And what kind of time scale is this uh, over? This progression. So uh, I mean, Mayfield was started approximately two years ago. February 2015, okay. and uh, yeah, these are almost equally spaced on that time, I would say. Hey, Curry. <laughs>